Hi, my name is Faisal Khan, Cisco Collaboration Instructor at Voice Bootcamp. In this video, we're going to discuss about using certificate. Now, certificate is one of the most important thing going forward in your uh, collaboration deployment. Cisco Unified Communication Manager use certificate to uh, that use public key infrastructure or PKI in order to validate the servers and client identity. It, uh, it presents a certificate to Unified Communication Manager in order to verify its identity. Now, when uh, another system, for example, IP phone or media server, tries to communicate with the Unified Communication Manager, the Unified Communication Manager will not trust other system and will deny access unless it has a matching certificate in its appropriate trust store. So if you're going to connect, try to connect to me, then I'm going to make sure that uh, I have a matching certificate that I can trust your uh, pro, uh, certificate that you provided to me. Now, certificate fi is a file that contains a certificate holder name, public key, digital signature of the certificate authority that is known as CA that is issuing the certificate. A certificate proves the identity of the owner of the certificate. Now, for Cisco Unified CM to be able to process an encrypted communication, you have to enable mixed mode authentication. Now, by default, a mixed mode is basically simply where CUCM will be able to process encrypted and unencrypted signaling. So, mixed mode basically means that CUCM can handle both type of encrypted and unencrypted traffic. Now, by default, mix mode is disabled. When you go to the enterprise parameter, you will see the mix mode uh, cluster security settings is set to zero. That's an indication that the mix mode is disabled. Starting with CUCM version 10.0, mix mode is enabled by default. So prior to version 10, it is required to use two of the hardware keys. Now, from an enterprise parameter shown in your uh, in the next slide, you will see that uh, by def max mix mode enabled, you can run uh, following commands. So if you for some reason see that your uh, in your enterprise parameter that the mix mode is disabled, you can SSH to your uh, call manager server, issue the following command utils ctl da uh, set dash cluster mix dash mode. This will ensure that your server is running in mixed mode. Some organizations such as the bank or the government or maybe some sort of law enforcement organization, they may have a restriction where it says only encrypted traffic will be allowed. So in that case, you may want to disable the mixed mode uh, concept. Now, certificate, there are many different type of certificates you have. You got server certificate and a certificate authority. Uh, server certificate which are used to validate the uh, device that could be a PC, could be a phone, could be an endpoint that is connecting to network and can be trusted whether or not a security risk exists. So here you got a call manager, you got a certificate authority server which will issue a certificate for the call manager by requesting a certificate. The issuing ser uh, server that which could be public or private will then issue a certificate to the call manager matching his identity. Then whenever you're trying to communicate with the call manager, call manager is gonna validate uh, the certificate by, issue, by asking you to send the certificate to you. You then validate that with uh, the certificate authority to ensure that all the identities are accurate. A server certificate are issued by certificate authority or CA. Now, when a server certificate receives a CA or root server receives a request for a server certificate, they perform a check on the request to validate its leg legitimacy. If the check passes, they will issue a certificate which can be loaded onto the server. A device connecting to the server, in this case, let's say laptop, when it's trying to connect to the server, the device will receive a copy of the certificate from the call manager and assuming they trust the issuing certificate. So if the call manager is issuing a certificate to you, to the laptop, the laptop will need to be able to say, no, what? no I, I trust this guy because I know the company that issued that certificate because I have their root certificate in my system. So let's assume that the call manager got the certificate from a company called uh, GoDaddy, okay? And on your laptop, you should have the GoDaddy root server. 
So when the server issues a certificate to the laptop, laptop will look at his GoDaddy's root certificate, see if the certificate that server sends is actually signed by GoDaddy. And if it is true, based on hash and every other, any, many other uh, component, then obviously the client will then trust the server. Now, there are many different public CA or certificate authority. You got uh, Sem Semantic, VeriSign, AWS, GoDaddy, and many other companies are that are around the globe. So who will be able to issue certificate for a small fee? If public CA issues a certificate, will, requ will be required on a server that are running on the internet. So for example, if you're going to run Cisco Expressway, online banking service, e-commerce website, secure payment sites, you want to make sure that you obtain a public certificate from an authorized CA. User, however, connecting to the uh, private, they can use a private certificate. User connecting to a public server will need to trust the CA that is issued the certificate. So your browser, your computer must have the, the root certificate of all the well-known certificate provider around the globe. And if in case it doesn't, you can manually install the root certificate of the server. Uh, but then again, you have to keep in mind that that may not necessarily be always trusted. So you always have to make sure that uh, you do a due diligence, make sure that the certificate root server is actually authentic, that somebody else is not actually just uh, pretending to be. Then when connecting device will reject if the, if the root certificate is not correct. So what will happen is it will simply say, uh, no, this is invalid certificate. Do you wish to continue? Or obviously it's your choice at the end of the day if you want to continue or not. Some cases it will uh, offer you, for example, um, it will reject your calls. Now let me show you how what I mean by certificate warning. So as you can see right now that I'm getting an error message saying that con your connection is not private. So that means that although it's giving you warning, but you still can log in, um, but some application will basically reject the call. Now the private CA can be deployed behind the firewall. So for example, if you have a private CA and you have a server inside, you could literally get a certificate from the private CA for internal communication. But anything that is on the outside, you should always obtain the certificate from your uh, public CA certification that you have. All right, so these will save enterprise time, money, since internal servers that do not need to be recognized by third party. So if you use the pub private CA, it will save you time and it will save you money because sometimes it may take a few days or a couple of hours for the certificate server to be issued, certificate to be issued, uh, where if you have an internal, you can issue them at any time you want. Now, certificate signing request. A certificate validation process use asymmetric encryption to ensure the authentication authenticity of the certificate. Now, asymmetric, uh, you got two type of encryption you have. You got symmetric, uh, symmetric uh, encryption and asymmetric. Think about the symmetric is when I create a, uh, let's say I create, uh, I encrypt my file with a key that I degenerated. In order for you to open that file, you need to get a copy of my key. So I have to share my key with you. So if I have 20 people, I have to share my key manually with all those 20 people. But asymmetric encryption will use two keys. You got a private key, you got a private key, and you got a public key. The anything encrypted with a public key can only be unencrypted with the private corresponding private key and vice versa. Anything encrypted with the private key can only be unencrypted with the public key. So the private key is held securely on the server. So again, anything encrypted with a public key can only be in unencrypted with a private with the private and vice versa. Anything encrypted with a private key can only be unencrypted with the following public key. So the private key is held securely on the CS server. The public, sorry, private key is held on the CS server, where the private key will be published for anyone who trusts the CA. Certificate will be issued by the CA, which are encrypted with CS private key. If enterprise trust the CA, they will use the CS public key to unencrypt the certificate. If the certificate can be in unencrypted, then it must have issued by the unrecognized CA. Therefore, it, it can be trusted. 
recognized CA, sorry. Therefore, it can be trust. If you cannot unencrypt it, that means it's been issued by a certificate server that your client do not trust. All certificate authority publish a CA certificate. The published certificate includes CA's company details, the validated date, the copy of the public key, and all clients will contain this information in their own trust. So if I am looking at my laptop right now, this computer that you're seeing, what I'm gonna do, if I go to certificate server, you'll see that there is something called certificate uh, manage, computer use certificate. Basically, it is, um, um, a, a, a container where all your certificate that you will be installed so here you will see the certificate there are all the uh, details are here so there is a folder uh, subfolder called uh, root certificate trusted root certificate this is where you see all the certificate that you have for uh, that is trusted by your laptop or PC around the globe so these are the root certificate of the well-known established now it is possible that sometime a new company emerge and they are also issuing a certificate but they haven't been around for long enough for all the browsers the computers to have their certificate trusted well in that case what you can do you can download their certificate root certificate and install it here so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you how to download a root certificate from a zero SSL certificate So I'm going to go to zerossl.com. Uh, zerossl.com gives you free certificate, and if you go to uh, the starting process, no, not here. We're going to go to first. Uh, it, if you read there, it said they obtained, they they give you certificate from this website called um, Let's Encrypt. It's based on Let's in, uh, Encrypt certificate. I believe is uh, we have to look at their details. One second. All right. So in their documentation, it gets less encrypt uh, certificates. You got to go to their website, which is right here, letsencrypt.org. This is a free organization that offers you free SSL certificate. You can go to their documentation, donate, get help, whatever options you have. And there you'll see call um, their chain of certificate, the root certificate. I'm going to download those root certificate right here. And this is what the root certificate that they provide. So what I'm going to do is right now is going to copy that into my notepad. And I will save it as let's call this let's encrypt and I'm going to save it on my PDF folder we'll call this uh, cert root cert let's encrypt dot CER okay so I have saved that file now I'm going to import it into my uh, computer so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my certificate uh, server I'm going to go to file uh, action and all task uh, actually no not there right here on the certificate I'm going to say all task and import this will allow me to import the root certificate uh, I'm going to do it for the whole machine rather than particular user I'm going to select that file that I have uh, uh, you know saved and this will be located on the PDF folder on my desktop and this is the certificate I want so I can click OK and it's going to ask you where do you want to store that now remember I selected the certificate container under the root so it will automatically show you that but in case you did not you don't see that what you want to do you click on browse and you want to go to the trusted root certificate it's important that uh, that certificate the root certificate is actually in that folder because your browsers are looking in that folder for the root so you will select that you click next next finish and it will tell you the certificates in a success was in, uh, imported successfully and once that is true you can scroll down until you see uh, the certificate it should be somewhere there you have to spend a little time to make sure uh, 
you see that. So sometimes you may even want to refresh it. Right there. That's the certificate that I just downloaded and is now trusted by this organization called Less Encrypt. Now, of course, at that moment, you can get more details about the certificate. You know, all the details that you need. And this certificate is valid for pretty much 2035, so pretty good. So now all I have to do is issue, uh, start working on generating more certificate uh, for my servers once I am ready to at that moment. All right, so uh, Unified Communication Manager or Call Manager, they use dif multiple different type of certificate. You got the Tomcat, you got Call Manager, CAPF, you got IPSec and TBS. So the Tomcat certificate, which is for HTTPS server, anyone accessing the HTTPS services from the Call Manager or IMN presence will use this certificate to validate the server. The, any application uh, and endpoints, Java client accessing the call manager using, uh, will then use the call manager certificate. So you, uh, this will be used when you're trying to access the HTTPS or web page, like by going to the web browser. Uh, call manager certificate will be used by application endpoint Java client when they're trying to register to call manager they use the call manager certificate you got CAPF or which is used aligned with a global certificate policy for CAPF with other services we'll talk about that later in our certificate sections IPsec uh, used for IPsec tunnel between the gateway and CUCM TBS which is used to validate trusted verification service connection. Now, Cisco Unified Communication Manager requires a CA and server certificate which needs to be uploaded for each services across the cluster. So, for example, a CA and a server certificate must be uploaded to Tomcat service and separately uploaded for call manager services. The so same certificate, I'm talking about the, you will create one certificate for server certificate, but it has to be applied twice, one as a Tomcat uh, uh, services and one will be as a call uh, call manager services uh, certificate so the root certificate will be applied twice uh, one for Tomcat trust one for call manager trust and the server server certificate will be say which is one certificate which will be applied twice one for Tomcat and one for call manager the certificate can be the same CA however the certificate a server certificate must up be uploaded once for each site. The services that support certificate verifications are listed in the following table. As I said right there, these are the serv serv uh, certificates that are serv uh, supported. Now this certificate will be shared across all the servers in your cluster providing the same services. Now, Call Manager supports two type of certificate format. You got privately enhanced mail or PEM. Uh, this format contains uh, the X509 certificate encoded in text in either base64 or in an encrypted, supported by Cisco VCS and Cisco Unified Communication Manager. Most common format in unified communication. And then other type of format you have is called Distinguished Encoded Rules or DER which contains X509 certificate in a binary form, form, supported by the call manager, but not by any other communication uh, application. So if you are going to download it, most likely you wanna download as a PEM format. The difference between the two type is simply the way the certificates are encoded, while the call manager can support either one. Uh, most other application may not necessarily support the DER. So therefore, if other UC products are being used, you want to you probably want to stick to the PIM, uh, PEM uh, format. All right, so let's go and fi uh, find uh, request a certificate from our uh, call manager site. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm first I'm going to log in to my call manager, and I'm going to log in as a upper OS administration. So this will be let me increase the font size a little bit. All right, so once I am getting the uh, sign-in authentication, first thing that I'm going to do is request for a certificate. 
All right, so now what you have is a call manager administration page, but on the navigation, I'm going to select Cisco OS administration. I'm going to log in as OS, which is separately because all the certificates are going to be under OS administration area. All right, so OS administration, let's log in. And once we log in, we are going to generate a certificate. Now, in Call Manager, there are two uh, type of certificates you can create. One for each server, which is individual server, publisher, subscriber, and presence, I'm in presence. Or you can create something called multi-server uh, multi certificate, meaning that one certificate contains all the three servers in your cluster, pub, sub, and I'm in presence. All right, so right now I am in my OS administration. Under security, you have certificate management, you have certificate monitor, uh, rev rev certificate revocation list, and other certificate related configurations. So let's go ahead with certificate management. This is where you will find all the certificate that you have within your system. Now, right now, what you're seeing right now here is uh, nothing. You, click, you gotta click on find to see things. So let's click on find and you'll see all the certificates that are currently uploaded to your system. And what you'll see that the most of these certificates are actually self-signed by the call manager. Now self-signed meaning, meaning that call manager is acting as a CA. So at this stage, as you can see, they're all self-signed, except there are few of them which are signed by CA that is internally used. All right, so let's go ahead and what we're gonna do right now now, in order to use certificate, you need to have a fully qualified domain name. Now, you'll notice here the fully qualified domain name that I'm using is called hqucmpub.vbcpod2.com. Uh, we're going to regenerate the certificate using the same domain. So right now, we're going to click on Generate uh, CSR right here. Now in generate CSR, we have to choose the purpose of the certificate. You got Tomcat and call manager. So we're going to generate for both of them. It is important that you actually generate certificate both. So we're gonna say Tomcat and we're going to select this and this is your parent domain. Okay, and you can add more domain if you want by adding multiple uh, uh, SAN. Now remember, we have already downloaded our uh, root certificate and I've already installed it here. So right now, certificate is generated. I'm going to close that. I'm going to regenerate for one for call manager. Okay, so let's go back to Tomcat again. Now, remember what we're talking about multi SAN versus multi server versus um, a single server? So, distribution. So, if you distribution, I only have my particular domain, or if I say multi server, what's going to do is going to pull all the servers that you have in your cluster and they're going to put their name in there. See, as you can see, you got HQIMP, uh, HQCUCM POP, HQCSCM SOP. So let's go and regenerate the Tomcat certificate with a multi SAN. So that in that way, I can use the same certificate for across all the servers instead of managing hundreds of different certificate files. Now, once the file is generated, we are going to have to download it, but for that, we have to go to different windows. So once this uh, Tomcat is done, I'm going to go show you the call manager certificate, and then we will go to actually create, create our own public certificate from Let's Screen Crypt. All right, so now we're going to generate the call manager. And again, multi-send because this is what we're trying to achieve. So it will pull the server name for all the multi send actually let's go generate again
we have to wait for the auto populate to work all right so in multi send you see you're only seeing uh, two which is your pub and sub not for the IMN presence so that's because this certificate is for the Java phone everybody to talk to the call manager all right so oh sorry that's, that's not the file I wanted to do it so now we're going to click on generate oops my apology okay I'm going to go ahead and generate the file now this file will contain a certificate request which is basically a text file uh, what we're going to do we're going to take a cont we're going to copy the content of the file and then we're going to submit it to the certificate authority all right so this is done so let's close this so now you notice when you generate a certificate after after that you'll see this little uh, menu option called download gcsr which wasn't there before so now if you click on this you should be able to download the two certificate that you have generated or maybe three because I we have downloaded extra so we have the Tomcat and then we have the call manager so I'm going to download the Tomcat first and it's very important that you name them properly because you don't want to mix and uh, uh, you, want to, you don't want to mix them so again I will put it into the same folder I'm going to call this Tomcat part two uh, Tomcat.cer uh, CRT or CSR which are whatever you want to call it okay so that's done and obviously it's going to download it right to the, the same folder and then I will select the call manager CSR part 2 CSR okay so I got to download it at this moment I am ready to generate a certificate from this website called zero SSL.com you want to go and a certificate tools and you can say get free certificate from that particular server click on start and um, very simple process to be honest with you uh, if you you know you can put your email address so let me see if my email address is going to work let me test this email first before anything else okay so it's a email address worked out i'm going to say fcon vbc part 2.com it's important that you have proper email and dns verification because i'm actually showing you live uh, certificate that actually can be used in production so now it's going to ask you to uh, paste your configuration now you could uh, download you can upload uh, paste the config so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the Tomcat first <coughs> okay so paste your CSR right here on the right hand side not on the left hand side so you're going to paste your CSR right here Well, no, actually, one one second. All right, so I'm going to paste it. I'm going to say accept, accept the thing, and it's going to ask you for HD verification. Uh, it depends on how you want to verify. I I'm going to use DNS verification because it's something that I have full control of my DNS, so I can verify that. So in the meantime, I will just simply select that and then click next it's going to generate an account key which is going to be pasted on the left hand side uh, this is your private key so you want to download this let's call it part 2 account key for tomcat okay so save that file right in your PC and then click next so at this stage I'm on a verification now this process procedure could be different from provider to provider it's a little bit uh, 
pain uh, if you are doing it with uh, this company because they want you to verify tons of stuff. And basically what they're saying, we need to create a domain tax record with these values. So what you wanna do is you're gonna copy this and you wanna to go to your DNS server. Now I am on my AWS DNS server. We use the Route 53, and this is my um, part two zone uh, file. I don't like. I don't wanna cover AWS in part of this course. And what we need to do is create a new record. So if you create a new record, it's gonna ask you what type of record. We're gonna choose text record. And we have to put that key. Now we don't put the domain name in there. It's very important that you don't put that domain name just up to the domain name and then val this value. You copy this value into uh, this, and when you, I guess, remove the high, uh, focus from it, it will go in a quotation, click on create, and then you go back, try the second one. Now you don't want to do the, mix, make this mistake too many times, so make sure that it is done once. Uh, it's a text record and copy your data value create okay so you can always once the verification is done you can always delete them that's not a problem all right again tax record and the value would be this now make sure there is no space let me close this. Uh, it is free, but then again, it is a pain to create them because of this procedure. Whereas GoDaddy, simply pay for it and that's it. All right. We're almost there. You can use this certificate for free for pretty much anything. It doesn't have to be, uh, so make sure it's a text record. Uh, it doesn't have to be for uh, call manager. It could be for your website, could be email, whatever validation is need. Now, this company only validate your domain, does not validate your auth company's details. Okay, one last one, which is right here. So you will make sure there is no dot text and copy the value. Okay, so you know you, you got the drill. So again, it's a text value. Make sure it is in, in the proper format. You click on save. Just verify it by simply, you know, put all your types together. Make sure you got one, two, three, four, five field. And same thing, one, two, three, four, five. And at that moment, you can click next. It's gonna to try to contact your DNS server. So you may wanna give it a couple of minutes because sometimes your DNS server takes time to update all the name servers. I would probably give about 10 to 15 to 20 minutes before you go next, but let's let's give it a shot. All right, so verification was successful. You notice AWS is quite fast, right? Unlike all the other uh, DNS provider, I find the AWS DNS to be extremely fast. All right, so this is your cert server certificate. So now what you're trying to download is a server certificate. So we're going to click on little this download button. And we're gonna call this Tomcat certificate. Okay, so First of all, the server type all, you're gonna say tomcat.cer and pod two, okay? And you save the file. So now we're done with this. We are going to uh, done and create another one and for, uh, for the second one. So if you wanna pause the video or fast forward it, totally up to you. So let's go and get started in the second one. CUCM, copy all. Paste it right there. I'm gonna say voice bootcamp uh, fcon at bbcpod2.com validation accept. Now HTML verification, it probably will require you to create a, a small t uh, HTML file, put it on your web server to make sure that you actually have access to that web server. I don't wanna do that right now, it's easy. I, I'd rather go with this option, it's much, even if it's painful. 
it's still uh, better this way. I don't want to mess up my website. So again, we are generating the private key, account key, whatever they want to call it. Uh, every vendor has different options. So we're going to first download that key. I'm going to call this uh, part two call manager account key, whatever. All right, so now I'm ready to go to the next stage, which is to verification. Again, I got to do the same thing. Okay, this time you will notice uh, information probably the same, the, but let's double check it, okay? So it says Acme Challenge CUCM Hub MS. So do I have that Acme Challenge? Yeah, CU, HQ CUCM Hub. So we got that. We just have to change the value, okay? So you just have to be very careful on that. Or if, you, if I were you, I would probably delete it and recreate it if you want if you want to make a mistake so make sure that it, you are putting into the right now I the only way I can verify that is by looking at the MS and you notice I have MS so I just follow that path okay all right so I will change the value then the next one would be called uh, Acme challenge HQ CUCM pub without the MS okay so this is where all challenge Acme CUCM pop no MS right there change the value all right so next one will be the sub and I will change this value which is right here last one which says just challenge like me just challenge okay so you will see that uh, where it is uh, just just challenge right here you'll see slightly different between the two because one had the IMN presence information so therefore it required it requires requested that uh, but here you don't need to worry about that because there's no IMN presence. So again, because I just made a, a quick verification, so you may have to wait 10 to 15 minutes for the updates to happen. So sometimes you have a patient, it will take some time for the work. So let's see if, if it does recognize the changes. Uh, what you may want to do, although I don't think that has any relationship to do this, but let's for mental satisfaction uh, type IP config forward slash flash DNS I don't think it's gonna help but let's assume uh, we're gonna uh, which will flash your DNS cache okay so let's click on next and see if it's gonna verify it might not because it may cache the values from the old uh, requirement oh no it did verify it so it's all good so I like uh, AWS All right, I'm now downloading the server certificate. So I got the root certificate, I got the Tomcat certificate, and now I got, I'm gonna call this, uh, what do you call, call this, part two, call manager.cer, okay? All right, so got my certificate, let's go back to call manager, and call manager, I am ready to now upload. So what you're going to do, you're gonna click on upload certificate change. So I'm gonna start with by adding the root certificate first because without the root certificate, you will not be able to upload the server certificate. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Tomcat Trust first, and I'm gonna choose the Tomcat Trust. Okay, so I am right now in my PDF folder. So where is my talk at? Part two Tomcat, okay. Okay, hold on a second. CSR file, CSR file. Uh, 
sorry, the root certificate is this one, my apology, the actual root certificate. So I'm gonna say root cert let's encrypt. That is the server certificate. So I'm gonna upload that to the root first. I was looking at the wrong file. So root certificate from uh, zero SSL, okay? And you upload this, it will tell you whether it's valid or not. If there is any problem with the file, sometimes when we try to save the file, we may make put a, a space there or make a mistake by you know, accidentally editing a file. It could be a problem. So you'll notice after you do that, you need to restart the Tomcat, which is fair. I'm gonna go and to the call manager trust and upload the same certificate root. Okay. All right, so now I am uploading the root certificate, as you can see right there. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, nothing fancy about that. Uh, after we do upload the root certificate, we are going to um, upload the server certificate individually. The first server certificate I'm going to upload is called a Tomcat. And this time, right, currently it is signed by the self-sign, and you're gonna click on choose, and you will select the Tomcat certificate that we just downloaded most recently okay so that is right there part 2 tomcat okay and if for some reason if your root certificate is not applied correctly it will tell you that this certificate cannot be uploaded because the root certificate doesn't exist so it while it is uploading is actually doing verification to see hey do I really trust this guy so that is very good thing because sometimes you may have forgot to upload the root so we want to make sure that that is the case and let's go ahead and wait and see what happened. So here's an indication that it was all successful for all of them. So IMP, HQ sub, HQ pub, while all of them are working fine, I am going to now upload the call manager. And after that, I'm gonna reboot the server or restart the Tomcat and we'll try. which will be this one. And let's wait. Uh, while we are uploading this, let's go to the SSH, make sure we are connected to the server. Actually, I'm gonna connect directly through my console. So this is my publisher CLI comp console. So I think the Tomcat, no, call manager is still. I think it's done. Yeah. Be, no, I think it's still in progress. Okay, so it's uh, it's now completed. To uh, do certificate. Okay, let's try one more time because it should say server sign. Maybe I've missed something. Okay. Okay, so upload it. All right, so call manager certificate has been done. It says restart your Tomcat and restart your TFTP service. All right, so let's go and uh, do that. It would be better if you just restart the server in this case, but oh well. Sys ETL service restart Cisco Tomcat. So I'll restart that. I will log into uh, and then I'll restart the to uh, TFTP. Uh, TFTP restart is required so that other servers can uh, obtain the file, but I believe for logging in, you just need the Cisco Tomcat. Now, as you can see, it's still running, so it takes a lot of time for the Tomcat to come in. And even after it comes back, you may still have to wait for a few more minutes for the web page to properly load. So let's be patient and I'll show you the final exam, uh, final test. All right, so I'm going to go and try this out right now. But now it still hasn't come up yet. So let's wait for another few minutes and we'll see the time cut. All right, so here you can see the uh, 
uh, well, right now that I've logged, I'm trying to log in with uh, the HQ CUCM pub dot VBC part two dot com. And you can see at the corner that there it is a secure site. So if you click on that, uh, let me you'll see the certificate is now valid connection is secure uh, and yeah if you click on the certificate it will give you the information about that it is being issued to this particular which is if you look at the certificate right now it shows ms hq cucm pop dash ms ms basically stands for multi-server remember that we chose the multi-server so it's issued by let's encrypt authority vx3 and it's been valid for 2020 my mom six uh general. so this certificate gives you about three months and after three months you have to regenerate that so basically it's free but it's good for only three months uh which is okay for testing purposes all right so that's pretty much it for uh this particular lab and hopefully you can now go ahead and you get get a valid certificate for your server